Hey guys, so one of the first maps you really need to understand on the fretboard is this map here. Now this is a map of the natural notes on the fretboard. We're not getting into any sharps or flats. As you can see, I've got my trusty highlighters with me and I've got my pen here. We may need the pen, we may not, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight a few of the things on here. I just wanna show you some of the things that you can spot straight away. The first thing that we need to spot is this relationship here and that is at the zero fret or the open strings then you can see that what we get is the way we remember our strings is elephants and donkeys grow big ears or Eddie ate dynamite goodbye Eddie any way that it is that you memorize the names of the notes of those strings those alphabet letters then that's good enough for me the whole thing about mnemonics is they are memory aids to help you to remember something until you don't need them eventually it'll get to the point where you just go E A D G B E you just know it now something to notice straight away with this sequence of letters is that it repeats at the 12th fret now this should be a little bit of a sigh of relief because essentially this is the scope of the fretboard once we get past the 12th fret we just repeat the whole sequence again so whatever happens from 0 to 12 happens from 12 to frets you've got 24 22 21 that is the nature of the fretboard and that's the way it works so if we focus on learning these first 12 frets first then what will happen is you will automatically know from frets 12 upwards without even trying so that's the first thing we need to look at. We'll put that colour away. It's a nice one, is that one? The next thing we need to do, I think is really important, is when we look at the notes on the fretboard, you can see that some of the notes live on their own. There is nothing in the frets there to indicate what kind of letter name those are. But this isn't always the case. You don't always have these notes that are isolated on their own. What happens is you get neighbour notes. Now, if you haven't seen my video on the musical alphabet then you might want to watch this up here and you'll know from that that there are two patterns that you need to understand and those two patterns are E and F and B and C and the reason you need to know that is because those are only one fret apart these are one fret apart that is also known as a half step let's get these fancy words in or in English money that's also called a semitone so we can have that a fret a half step or a semitone so what do I mean by that? Let's look at one here. I've got E and F here. And if you want a funky way of remembering this, then the way I remember it is I like my breakfast. I like my eggs fried. That's how I like them. I like my eggs fried. And I like, let's do this one here. I like my bacon crispy. So let's have that crispy bacon and those eggs fried. And that's the mnemonic that I'm going to use just to help me here. E, F, B, C. It's just there to help you. I'm going to use this color here. And I just want to show you if I just do this one here E and F I'm just highlighting the fact that these are next door to each other this is zero this is one they live next door let's have a look through the fretboard here oh I can do the same thing here and this is another thing to notice anything that happens on this E string is mirrored on this thin E string as well so whatever happens on the thick E string is going to happen on the thin E string look there's a G there at the third fret and there's a G at the third fret and so on you can do this all the way up now as you can see as I come up this E string you can see I get B and C a half step or one fret apart from each other I'm going to mirror that over onto the thin E string as well there so you can see that relationship and just to reiterate this idea that the zero fret is the same as the 12th fret you can see that we get a repeat of E and F and E and F there now remember it was not just E and F it's B and C let's go through this systematic let's just look at at these ENFs first though let's just have a quick little nosy at those so we've got ENFs let's look on the A string we can see we go A B C D E F bang on there you go there's an E there's an F let's go on to the next string D well it's going to happen very soon so you can see that we get E and F just there moving on to the G string we've got G A B C D E F we had to come further up the neck to find that one but it's there all the same on the B string let's have a look B C D E F and you can see that it lives there for the E and the F we've already done it on this thin E string when we were mirroring over so
So let's finish this off by finding these semitones or half steps and let's find the BC. We've already done it on the E strings. So we've done it on the thick E string. We've done it on the thin E string. Let's do it on the A string. This is an easy one to find because it just goes A, B, C. So A, B, C there. And you can see you get both of these on each string. There's an E and F and a B and C on the E string. On the A string here, you can see there's a B and a C and an E and an F. Let's move on to the D string. We're after these BCs here now. So let's move up here. D, E, F, G, A, B, C. We have to move quite far up to get that one there. Now, G, B, C. That's on the G string there. You can see we've got two of those on that string. Now, all that remains to do is the B string, which is very convenient. B and C. It starts on the B string. So it's just going to be right there. And you can see that again repeats there. Just clarifying this idea that this is the scope of the fretboard. Zero to 12 there, guys. So this is handy when we want to look at the way that these strings work and I have talked about the kink in the tuning in previous videos about how the guitar is tuned but needless to say the G to the B is where the funkiness happens and this really demonstrates it if we start on the E and the A string on that string pair there you can see I get this convenient little square happening there you get the B E and the C and the F there parallel to each other now look at this on the A to the D string we get the same thing thing again right okay d to the g string next string pair along we get the same thing happening again however the way the guitar is tuned it goes a bit wonky here and this is what i call the kink in the tuning and to maintain our patterns like this we have to compensate by adding one fret and that means that my square becomes this wonky parallelogram there but once i get back over onto my b and my e string you can see that i get back to being able to draw draw that as a square. This is a good thing to help you with these patterns. Now a useful little route that can help you to understand where you are on the fretboard as well is by using a diagonal approach. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you a rubbish, absolutely terrible story. But like I say, people remember stories, people remember mnemonics. And what we're going to do is we're going to put one on here. Now where on social media do you basically hang out with your friends? friends. Oh, what's the biggest platform that people hang out with their friends? Yes, that is Facebook. And what we're going to do is we're going to see this here. And I want you to see this little diagonal pattern that comes across here. You can see again FB. So I think of that as Facebook. I know it's a terrible story. Just bear with me on this. And then what we can see is if we compensate, we can find that pattern again, just there we get Facebook again. No, it's a terrible story, but go with it. Don't let the truth get in the way of a good story. Now, like I said, who do you connect with on Facebook? And that is usually your BF, your best friend. So if we take this across here, you can see we get BF, BF. You will notice this little pattern that goes along these diagonals here. And what this does is it essentially helps you to split up counting up the neck. Now, when we generally start learning the notes on the guitar, we start down here. And if I said to you, find a D on the A string, you would go A, B, C, D. That's fair dues. But once you get past the seventh fret, it starts to become folly because what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to go backwards as well, which is why you need to learn your musical alphabet backwards. So we need to go both ways. But what is nice is if we could have somewhere in the middle where we can have a landmark. Now, as you can see, there is nothing on the sixth fret there but on the seventh fret we get conveniently the word bead now this helps you to get your bdi on the midpoint in the fretboard so that you can work up from here or work back from here which means you are more efficient than counting up imagine you wanted to find a g on the a string instead of counting a b c d e f g using all those steps to get there if we could just go a and then go back one you know that is going to be a more efficient method.
method. But also, this is going to help us now. So if we've got EADGBE there, at that point, we also have this kind of meridian or equator, if you want to call it that, in the middle of the fretboard that's going to help you to just see where your natural notes are. And another point on these natural notes, what we want to start doing is associating where these dots live. The, the dots or the markers on the side of the neck of your guitar, they're on the third, the fifth, the seventh, the ninth, and the twelfth. If you remember it, the double dots are at the twelfth fret, we get single dots on the nine, seven, five, and three. Those are just there to help you visually to get your eye on these positions here, just to help you. And if you notice, here, then what happens is at the 3rd, 5th and 7th, we get what I call the gift of the gab, G-A-B. Because what we want to do is learn our E string first. If you're interested in learning your E string, then you might want to watch this video here. <laughs> 